Steve, what are you doing? Judy, Bauman's has the best fresh produce anywhere, and I'm looking for my most favorite. Okay, what's your favorite? Oh, here it is. It's apple cider donuts. It's produce here. <laughs> we'll tell you more what's going on at Bauman's next on Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time. So William, if cider donuts are your favorite, my favorite is sitting over there too. I suspect you mean this right here. Ah, cider. <laughs> well, if it's apple time at Bauman's, it's also fall festival time. In fact, later on in the show, we're going to be talking to Brian about all of the really fun, wonderful things happening at this year's fall festival. And also coming up in the show today, we'll show you how to fix those rotten fence posts. And we'll show you how to divide your peonies. But first, fall rose care. Well, it is a beautiful day, and I'm in Washington Park at the International Rose Test Garden, and I'm with Rachel, who is a new curator, so welcome. Thank you. So great to be here. Well, good. I'm, we're excited to have you. So, you know, to, it's getting to be fall, and we need to talk about roses and pruning, and it's just a little early, so when do you usually start to do the wind pruning of the roses? You know, it's hard to believe that a beautiful day like today, pretty soon it'll be time, the, the rains and the winds will come. Um, so now is the time to kind of get that mentality put on your, on your calendar. Usually about mid to late November is a good time to wind pruning. And wind pruning is quite literally, you're <laughs> pruning because, you know, all these Oregon um, winters have all this rain and mm -hmm. wind. And so that might compromise the health in the roses because we're looking at this tall rose, you know, it's about six foot. So if a, a huge gust of wind comes and breaks it, that can be a problem for many reasons. Um, you can have a domino effect. It'll break at the base where, um, and then just kind of topple over and, and create a domino effect. And so what you need to do is you prune it to a height so that the winds, it won't it would minimize the risk of the winds. Okay, about what height would we be, can you demonstrate on this rose? Absolutely, so we're definitely doing about our wrist. Okay. And so you're gonna do a wind printing in the wrist, but at your wrist height. And then in the spring, around late, February, uh, late January, early February, you're gonna do your, um, your spring pruning. Okay. So if you can show us like a, exactly where, because we love to see, you know, we're people that Absolutely. are visual. So let us see where you would make a cut. Okay, so my wrist is right here. So I'm All gonna right. follow that. Look, this is right about here, right about above this node. And I like using loppers just because it minimizes my exposure to, <laughs> to thorns. The plant. And we're just going to cut it like that. And you don't have to worry about where the leaves are because you are just going to be taking it off. And it's really the health of the plant that you're worried about, not be pruning for more production. It, it, exactly. You pretty much are not so worried. You're basically topping it. You're not worried about oh, the sure. node because these plants are going into dormancy. Right, right. So it doesn't matter so much. Um, where you do it. It will matter more when you're pruning in the in spring. The spring right. This is just going to be a quick cut. All we'll right. just do it again. Look, that's not Perfect. even right by a node. Right, and um, so easy. And so easy. Um, and now what about um, mulching? Should we be mulching now? Um, you know, if you really want to get a jump start on your weed suppression, probably the best thing to do is to put, you know, a couple inches of mulch down into the beds. And you think about it, you're going to be having all these leaves down sure. on your lawn. You rake them up and put them in the bag. Why not make it a little easier, you know? <laughs> Just rake them into the, the beds, and then you can put some mulch on top of that, make it look a little bit nicer, right, right. and that helps suppress the weed seeds. You know, the weed seeds are starting to, to start, mm -hmm. and, you know, they have a little barrier that kind of, you know, keeps them at bay a little bit. Excellent. So you get a little jump start. Right, and then what about fertilizing? Is that a good time or no? We're going to wait. Um, so you would wait until April because you think about the roses are going to dormancy. Sure. So fertilizing, it's, it's helping growth. Ah. And that's the uh, exact opposite of what we want to do. Ah. So really, you have to put it on your calendar for November to do all of this wind pruning. And you're getting it right from Rachel. She's the expert here. We got all those great tips. But you know, you can still come down to the Rose Garden. It's still lovely. There's still flowers to see and enjoy a beautiful day walking around the garden. Well, thanks so much. And again, welcome. Thank you. Great to be here. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru. 
your way on the Parkway. You deserve the best. So at Capital Subaru, we make sure you're getting the best experience at every touchpoint. Award-winning customer service. A wide selection of new Subarus to choose from. Two years complimentary service on all new vehicles. And perks you'll only find at Capital Subaru. Start your next adventure on the Parkway. Kick off ball at Capital and save $6,500 off MSRP on the safe and versatile new 2017 Subaru Outback 2.5i Touring. Make no payments for 90 days. Capital Subaru, your way on the Parkway. The health and beauty of your garden starts from the ground up, and healthy soils begin at Grimm's Fuel. For the best in garden mulch, blended soils, and bark dust, choose Grimm's. U-Haul delivered or installed, Grimm's can do it. And if you're looking for a new lawn, Grimm's can do that too with our special lawn installation service. Grimm's is also the area's largest recycler of yard debris. The foundation for a healthy garden begins at Grimm's Fuel. Every year, trees fall or break, causing property damage, power outages, and injury. Now is the time for Bartlett Tree Experts and Collier Arbor Care to get your trees ready for the extreme conditions ahead. Our free consultation will help to spot the signs of potentially hazardous trees. We can help address problems before they occur. Whether it's trees or shrubs, we can help you get a healthy and beautiful garden. Collier Arbor Care and Bartlett Tree Experts, providing environmentally safe tree care since 1907. To bring the extraordinary colors of fall to your landscape, you need to come to a place that offers more than the ordinary. At Sagawa Nursery, we love fall. From brilliant yellows to vibrant reds, we have one of the Northwest's largest selections of Japanese maples. At Sagawa Nursery, we also have a colorful selection of hardy plants, so your home can be as beautiful as the season. Come visit us and see how we can help you make your season extraordinary. Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary. Well, you know, normally we, when we come out to Adelman's Peonies and we talk about the beautiful peony flower with Carol, you know, they're, they're all in bloom everywhere. We've never been here at fall before to talk about how to prune and cut them, but look at this garden still, even in almost October here, it is stunning. So good job on that, Carol. <laughs> now, what are we gonna be doing? Because we've talked about how to prune different peonies before, but tell me about this one variety we're gonna talk about. Okay, this is a tree peony called Renown. And one of the reasons, some of the reasons you might want to divide a tree peony is if you're moving and you want to take some with you, if it isn't putting out as many flowers as it did before, if it's in too shady of a spot, so, some of those things you might want to dig it up and divide it. And this is about a three-year-old plant here. This is only three, my goodness, it's massive. And this is the woody top and we've cut it down quite a bit so that we can get to what we're doing and we washed it so that we can have a good view and these are the tools that we use for dividing. And Carol you suggest even <laughs> even to the home gardener when you dig any peony up to do some pruning wash it off so you really see what's there right? Well it's a good idea especially if it's an expensive one sure. so you yeah. <laughs> can feel more comfortable with what you're doing. So you want to leave some pieces with eyes on some pieces and these, with roots. And these little white things here are the eyes? Those are the eyes okay. and those are going to make the stems and the leaves and the flowers for next year. And then what is your goal? What are you looking for with each of the uh, stems with eyes well, on it? We, we want to leave some good root mass with it. Uh huh. We'll see how we can get that out of there. I feel like I should help but I don't <laughs> know how. I've got it all the way. I think it's pretty well affixed to this one. Uh huh. And we have another one over here I think we can cut off pretty and easily. And so you're not really seeing, you're not saying, oh, this is the one I have to do this with. You're kind of letting the, the whole root system tell you what needs right. to be cut, okay? Sometimes you can get some big ones, wow. but sometimes you get some small ones too. So. And would you consider this one, th this could be replanted just like this then? Well, it could, but we're going to cut the... Oh, you're just pruning off some of the we're length gonna of We're going to take off some of the length so that it gets the idea that it's supposed to start growing, growing again. again. And, and then would you transplant it now at mm, this time? Yes. And so you can plant it like that and cover it up probably about to here. Uh-huh. And it'll just take off. And one fellow today called and he was thrilled because his first year plant that he planted last fall tree peony bloom for him already. Oh really? 
and his friends thought that was unheard of. <laughs> well, it's not now, is it? So maybe uh, we're going to have to grab hold of this and pull. I'm very good at helping. So what we're going to do is take a break while we work on this and get it apart, okay? So now, Carol, from that one massive plant, you've come up with five really large ones and one little one that you're going to give your granddaughter to work on, you said. But tell me about um, now that the transplanting concept, what is it that you would use to amend the soil before you put these in? Well, we use a low nitrogen fertilizer, like a tulip daffodil fertilizer that works really well. Um, and in Western Oregon, we have acid soil. So we add a cup of lime or dolomite to the planting hole to sweeten it up a little bit. And then, and so you would set the plant down like this. The roots actually could be a little bit shorter. Uh huh. And and cover it up to these bottom eyes here, and it will make more growth next year. And then possibly next year it'll set out more more stems. Uh, they're not like a tree rose. They shouldn't be just a one stem plant. Yeah, they yeah. should be a multi stem plant. And if you get a plant that has old, weak stems, you could cut it down to the ground level and it will put up sprouts okay. beside it so that you'll have a and what about invigorated. You, you really think, especially with tree peonies, they should be on their own root system is the best for them. Yes, because if you live in a really cold climate, then if they die down in the winter, they'll come back up as the same thing as opposed to a grafted one, which sometimes the herbaceous graft will take over. Sure, sure. Well, you know, we always come out here in the spring and we see these breathtaking blooms from peonies. But the reality is sometimes you got to do a little work in the fall to get ready for those beautiful blooms in the spring. For more information on all kinds of information on peonies, you can go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to Carol's uh, peony website. Carol, thank you so much for your time, my friend. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Is your garden in need of refreshment? Hi, I'm Sarah, and there are plenty of things in bloom at Portland Nursery. Come check out our beautiful fall color to perk up your garden. At Portland Nursery, we consider fall the second season, and the gardening opportunities are endless. Establish next year's trees, replace lettuce and greens, or get a jump on onions and garlic. Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people, on 50th and Stark and 90th and Division, or at portlandnursery.com. Fiber on. Deck it right the first time. Fall is a time to think of planting and planning. Planting new plants now will help them get a jump start on next year. Black Gold All Purpose can help your plants get ready for winter and next spring. Formulated with a blend of natural and organic nutrients, it contains everything your plants and spring bulbs need for a happy and healthy start. Look for Black Gold All Purpose at your local garden center or nursery. Black Gold, all the riches of the earth. Fall in the Northwest is the best time of year to plant with warmer soils and cooler evenings. A time to spend with family and friends. Fall is a time to celebrate, to decorate, and to enjoy the colors that are only found here in our area. Fall is a time to come to Garland Nursery. And let us show you all that fall can be. Garland Nursery, inspiring beautiful and bountiful gardens. Well, I am in a place at Bauman's Farm and Garden that most customers cannot get to. I'm in the cooler where all the magic happens. I'm with Christine, who is the cider goddess. How are you doing? I'm great, thank you. So is this where all the concoctions go on in this lovely, cool space? This is where I do a lot of the blending. So I take my apple juice that's pressed out there and then I'll blend it in with different berry concoctions or I'll, uh, I'll put purees of berries or peaches in these blending tanks and then once I once they get the flavors mixed in, I put it into here and carbonate it and 
That's that is, the magic. That is magic. And really, so apple cider isn't all about apples, is it? It is, well, I mean, for a big part of the world and a big part of history, it was all about apples. But here in the Northwest, we take our palate a little broader <laughs> and we put in whatever we want. And here on the farm, we've got so much to choose from, berries and, uh, you know, peaches. And we have pears, of course, too. And so that's part of the fun is figuring out what tastes good with the apple oh, juice. definitely. And then I hear that you have a new one that's going on for this fall season. <laughs> I made a boysenberry cider and it's got some uh, fresh squeezed lemon juice and lemon zest and then our boysenberries from here on the farm. Uh, that is so much fun to have the bounty of the farm. It is. And really today is a great day to come to Bauman's because you're having a huge apple cider the festival. The second annual cider festival here on the farm. We are, uh, we've invited a lot of other Oregon Washington cider makers to come and join us and we have uh, 13 or 14, I, I can't remember exactly, Lots. but everybody bringing a couple, two or three flavors. So we've got a lot of flavors of cider to try for people today. Uh, and that starts today and also tomorrow because usually today you're not tomorrow. open on Sunday. So that's really that's wonderful right. to be able to come on two days. Yep. Christine, how much does it cost to try all those wonderful ciders? So for $10, you can get into the Cider Festival and you get uh, a commemorative glass and eight tasting tokens. You can buy more tokens and you can also buy bottles to go mm, with the door. That is so. great. And where can we find out more information? Well, we have uh, the Bauman Cider website, baumanncider.com, and you can see not only what's going on here this weekend, you can see where we're on tap in town and um, lots of other information. That is cool. And there is more things going on at the festival. So I'm going to go talk to Brian Bauman and hear about what else is going on. Well, now I'm talking to Brian Bauman. And Brian, this is really just the beginning of a whole month long celebration. You know, we have been we've been working on this since July. <laughs> it takes months to put it together, but it's because it's our favorite time of the year. It is. Um, we just love having everybody down here and there's so many different things to do and like just like we're standing in the greenhouse here you know we grow all the big hanging baskets in the spring we have all of those greenhouses filled with activities so no matter if it's mm. raining outside which last year it rained all month um or it's sunny day right it's covered and ready to go that is so much fun because we want to come out and enjoy it and it's just you come out and you know that you're gonna have a great time yes rain or shine everything's gonna be great and wonderful and you know a lot of people every year we try and listen okay well what are things that we can do better and one of the things that we decided this year was we couldn't open everything during the week because I just didn't have enough staff to make sure everything was run safely. So this year we put extra effort that a lot more of our activities are gonna be available on the weekdays. Not nice. everything, but most things. So, you know, weekends are busy for a lot of families. We get that. But um, this year more stuff's gonna be available during the week. That is nice because come in the middle of the week and there's not as many, it's not as many yep. uh, crowds. So that's right. really great. So this weekend is the Cider Festival. So what's right. going on next weekend? Next weekend is our giant pumpkin oh, way off. That's so much fun. And talk about like, Die Hard Gardeners, <laughs> these people are amazing. They are, man. It's unbelievable. Their pumpkins are literally like growing 50 to 60 pounds a day right now. Wow. Maybe more. So a couple years ago, we broke the Oregon record at 1,998 pounds. Whoa. So you never know what's gonna happen here. Um, but it's, it, whether it's an 1,800 pound pumpkin yeah, or a 2,000 so pound much. pumpkin, they're amazing to see. And to talk to these people, all the farmers are gonna be here they're not just farmers, they're just everyday gardeners they like are, us too. They are, they are, they're chewers. Mm -hmm. And it's awesome. So that if you have great. a chance to come see that, and one of the favorite things is our giant pumpkin drop, which will be Saturday the 7th at 1 p.m. Uh, that is stunning, you gotta see that because that's incredible to watch that huge squash just drop, yes. drop out of the sky. Yes, and it's gonna be 1,300 pounds this year. Oh man, and then what about food? Because we have to eat when we come here. Everything from uh, sausages, corn on the cob from the farm, baked potatoes from the farm, and this year we're doing new, um, corn dogs, mm, fresh dipped oh my corn favorite. dogs. Uh. My kids are so excited. <laughs> Well, not just kids. I think everybody is excited to come out to Bauman's for their fall festival. It runs until Halloween Day. Mm -hmm. There's so much information on their website. It's just too much to talk about today. So please go to that website and find out all that information, directions to get down there and get everyone in the car and come out and have a blast. Thanks, Thanks. so much. Thanks, Judy. Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food, and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen.
Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens. Standard's prices are great. We've checked, they're very competitive. That's why we use them. You don't have to waste time running around making phone calls. It's good to know when working with Standard that our staff doesn't have to spend incredible amounts of time searching for pricing. And even with the clients that have checked around, they've always come back to Standard as being their best buy. Since 1947, we set the standard. Standard TV and appliance. Stop and smell a rose. Hear a child laugh. See the beauty that is Oregon. You will find all this and more at the Oregon Garden in historic Silverton. 400-year-old oaks, edible landscapes, a children's garden. The Oregon Garden has something for everyone. You can ensure the garden remains a jewel in the Mid-Willamette Valley through your support as an individual, family, or corporate member. Support the garden that showcases the diverse botanical beauty of our state, the Oregon Garden. Locally grown, fresh from the farm, stylish and sustainable, your dream yard starts at Owl's Garden and Home. Our biggest sale of the year is on now. You'll find huge discounts throughout the store. Save big on perennials, trees and shrubs, houseplants and more, including patio furniture and pottery. Don't miss it. Our biggest sale of the year is on now. Al's Garden and Home in Woodburn, Sherwood, Gresham, and Wilsonville. So you know we have a great product that we're going to be sharing with you today. It's uh, from the company called Sturdy Fence Post Brackets, and I'm here with, with Chuck. And Chuck, you are the owner and the co-creator of this, right? Co-inventor, co-creator. Sure. So tell me, first of all, tell me what's it for? It puts uh, a bracket on a fence post that's either broken or just leaning. Um, if there's dry rot around the bottom and you don't, you don't have to throw the old post away. Yeah, yeah. And which makes sense because a lot of times fence posts aren't ruined all the way up and down. It's just that, that break or that crack or that rotting area that makes them weak. That's So true. this could save a lot of time and money, couldn't it? <laughs> oh, a lot of time and money. I'm 73 years old. It takes me a half hour from start to finish. To do the whole thing. To do the whole thing. So I see a lot of stuff sitting here. It doesn't, and this doesn't take a whole bunch of tools and things, just a few things. Tell me what it is that's in Post hole digger, and okay. you can borrow your neighbor's post hole digger uh -huh. and actually have them help you. Um, a little stir stick, uh, level to make sure it's plumb, a hammer, pair of gloves, a 60 pound bag of uh, uh, concrete mix, a drill, some 3 eighths by two and a half inch lag screws, the, uh, a few of the uh, galvanized six penny nails, and then a sturdy fence post bracket, and then a bracing pole with a bracing stake. Empty bucket if you need it uh, to haul water. We happen to have a hose here, so it's gonna be real quick and clean. And so to do all this, we're gonna actually have the homeowner come on in. Come on in, Sherry. And she's gonna start finishing up the digging just to show how really easy this is. And we'll be back in a couple minutes and show you the completed project. Well, and with that, Sherry has finished digging the hole, which I think is probably the hardest part of this, really. It is. So now tell me about what, what happens next. Well, we have a concrete ball down here, and it weighs about 60 pounds, sometimes up to 80 pounds. Uh -huh. The only part that's wrong with this fence is post right there. is right there where yeah. the dry rod is. The rest of it is still good and solid. So this comes out, it misses the old concrete ball. Well, see, I wondered, when I looked down there, she's not digging by the post because there's concrete there. So that's this, correct. it says why? It does. Okay. And that's the reason we invented this, is not to have to dig out this old concrete yeah. ball. Yeah, so then this, because again, like we've said already, this part of the post is fine. It's the part down here that is rotted and often True. broken. Yep. This saves that whole dilemma. Yeah. So now tell me about this fence. Show me what's wrong with it. Actually show me and what I would do next to install the We've loosened post. this board, so we're just uh -huh. going to take it off. Okay. And well, then, I saw it wiggling already when you sure. pulled it off. <laughs> and it is just very, oh, wow. very loose. Yeah. And that's because it's dry rotted down yeah. here at the bottom. And so we're going to put a bracket in. Here's one right here. And it's dug down between uh, 18 and 19 inches. It fits up right next to the, uh, to the concrete ball that's down there. It goes over the top of it. And then we put that board that I just took off. We uh -huh. put the board back over that. You won't see a thing. 
So then is now the place where we pour the new concrete? Right now we attach the bracket. Okay. Then we fill it one third full of water, add the concrete, agitate it, really talk to it. Yeah. Yeah, get it upset. <laughs> and then um, and then you and we'll let go it from sit. There. Well yeah. let's take this step next, get this done, and then we'll come back and show you what else we're gonna do. Great. Okay, now Chuck, I see that you're leveling things up there. It's perfect. And it, it, this is in now, so tell me the steps that we went through from the concrete forward. Well, from, from first thing you have to do is you have to find the loose posts. Sure, sure. If they're leaning or broken, you have to find them, and it's like a six-year-old's loose tooth. Once it wiggles, <laughs> it's not going back, okay? <laughs> then what we do is we dig a hole, we come out six inches away from the post, dig it 18 or 19 inches deep, you put the bracket in, right on top of the old concrete ball so you don't have to dig that out. Yeah. You put three eighths by two and a half inch lag screws in, pre-drill with a quarter inch drill, fill it one third full of water, add a bag of uh, concrete, uh, agitate it, get it going. And we're gonna finish it off because it's still a little soupy. And you level it. And that's it. And then how long do you leave it with the brace on? One day. 24, One day, 24 hours. hours. Yeah, that's all it needs. And then I'm assuming you just put the soil back on and you said you could even put the fence plate cover yeah. back on to hide the whole thing. That's what we will do nice. after we take the brace off. Nice. We'll put that uh, fence uh, the upright. And just cover it all up. So now let's say I, I, I get these, I'm going to do this. What if I have a couple of questions? Do you have a website I can go to and just... It's at stir-defense.com. Okay. Sturdyfence.com. You can call me direct at 503-941-5228 and I'll answer the questions Perfect. for you. If I'm not there, I will return the phone call uh, that day. Well, there you go. Now listen, this can really, this is a great idea and it can save you a small fortune on redoing an entire fence when all you have is one broken fence post. So for more information, we always invite you to go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to their website. Chuck, thank you so much, my thank friend. Thank you. I appreciate it, William. Let me You're get this glove <laughs> off. I'm going <laughs> to shake your hand. Thank you, sir. We wanted to say a big thank you to Bauman Farms for letting us come out here and play with them today. Now, if apple cider isn't your thing, or if fresh apple cider donuts isn't, but you still love apples, well, they have a great selection of fresh apples as well. And if you can't make it out to Bauman's for their fall festival, there's so many other festivals going on in the area. Please go to Gardentime.tv to our calendar and see about all the other events. Thank you all so much for the kindness of your time today, and we look forward to sharing it again next week right here on Garden Time. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.